Minecraft 1.18 is awesome. I've been a little bit strange in that I avoided exploring the new terrain while the snapshots were releasing so that when the official release came out, I'd be hyped for it. And I'm so glad that I did because, well, this looks incredible. I've got the sun setting. We've got beautiful snowy peaks. I mean, look at this. Seriously, look at this. This is, this is so cool. I want to live down here. I want to live in this valley. I, I want to live down here. And it's just, just, it's beautiful. Flowers, flowers with peaks in the background. I know that many of you probably did this months ago while the snapshots were releasing, but just let me have my moment. Okay, let, let me have my moment of excitement and exploration. I mean, look at that. This is vanilla Minecraft. And I haven't had to spend days building it. It would be rude not to. It would be rude not to. This is the perfect flying cave and I'm in survival mode so I can't die and it makes me look good. Look at me, I can just bounce off of walls. It's fine. I'm getting a little bit carried away here. And you too can get carried away in my new merchandise store. I can't believe I've just said that. But yeah, the designs are only available for a limited time. So grab them while you can. Mountain house. I want to build a mountain house, but not just any mountain house. I want to build a redstone mountain house. This is going to be filled to the brim with all sorts of interesting redstone contraptions. And having flown around for a decent length of time, I would say that this rather extreme peak here is the one that I want to build on. Powdered snow is so white that it makes white concrete look dull. I mean, look at this stuff. I actually thought my screen was broken. By the way, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing right now, and it shows. Things are not going well. After a complete rethink, I'm definitely preferring these sorts of vibes over the hyper-modern futuristic vibes, so I'm going to be pursuing this. And I gotta say, I'm incredibly proud of this little addition right here. This has me excited. This is meant to be a redstone video, but I'm spending hours working on the details of this thing. I mean, look at it. We've got a floor, right? But then underneath, we've got a little garden. A garden under the floor. This is a building technique that I've picked up recently, which is alternating glass panes and glass blocks to give a textured glass look. It looks good. I'm having far too much fun. I really want to live here. If I could convert myself into a blocky man and, and move into this world, I would do it in an instant. After a few more hours of fantasizing over this mountaintop life, the exterior of the build is all finished. And I think it goes without saying that I'm absolutely chuffed to bits with this thing. I mean, just look at it. How cool is that? It might be a tiny bit drafty with the fact that A, it has no back. Don't worry, I will, I will do that soon. And B, we have these gigantic open windows here, but that's fine. No, I'm sure it's not. It's not that cold, is it? I mean, look at me. I'm just in my suit and tie. Don't even have any gloves on. It's fine. I'm heated by the musty warmth of my moustache. All right, it's time to stop fanning about with all this fancy pantsy building stuff. It's time to do some real work, some logic, some redstone bits and pieces. I mean, what's come over me? I've been placing buttons that don't connect to anything. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm concerned for myself. Build number one farms and those farms are all going to be built in this area here so we've got three tiers which means we've got three spaces for three different farms so i'm thinking we have a carrot farm a potato farm and then a wheat farm so in terms of the actual redstone behind these farms it's not going to be groundbreaking in the slightest in fact it is going to be very very 2012 so we've got each of the layers out the back we've got ourselves a bunch of dispensers this is where all of the crops are going to be going and they're all going to flow down through this channel right here into a storage system that is going to be in this room over here. The problem with making the outside of my base look really cool is that I now want to make the inside of the base look cool as well. Why can't I just build ugly things? I am, I am secretly enjoying this a lot though. Sorry, back to logic and things. Now, initially I put the activation for the dispensers down at the bottom here, but I think I actually want to have the activation and also all of the storage on this floor here. So we've got the basement. We then have this, this area here, and then up at the top, we're gonna have something else. And I'll get onto that in a little bit. But first, I just wanna listen out to these dispensers. So, water activates. And then water deactivates. So all of our vegetables will be flushed out and then the water will be removed so that we can replant. This side of the mountain house isn't looking quite so cool, but this side of the mountain house is, especially now that all of these layers are kitted out with farms. I know that we could have done more efficient designs and I know this is going to sound crazy, but I wanted to forfeit a little bit of efficiency for this look here. That, yeah, it pains me to say it as well. This whole video is just me being pained with the fact that I'm enjoying building. Now, it may look good, but I'm not 100% certain it's going to work just yet. So let's do our first tester. I press the button and we should hear all of the water and that is looking pretty good. The only things that got caught were these ones here right on the edge of the ladder. 
but that slight dip in efficiency I don't think is a big problem. So all of the items that have just dropped down to the bottom are then going to make their way across into this item elevator here which is going to send them up onto this level. And this is where the storage system is going to be going. And I thought I'll quickly run through and do a little bit of decoration here. Obviously, we really, really don't have much space to play with in this build. And I'm still not 100% certain how I'm going to travel between the layers. I guess we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it. But this little item elevator setup should hopefully work really quite nicely. Up it goes. No, that's exactly what I didn't want to happen. How did I miss that? Mumbo said calmly. Up we go. And there it is. Absolutely no issues with building that one. I don't know why I'm nervous to test this, but I'm, I'm nervous to test this. Okay, button has been pressed. And... I mean... I'm seeing zero evidence of vegetables currently. That is, that goes against what I've said in these signs. And of course, it is caused by my tiny little flood. Right, let's get this fixed up. Comparator goes in there, and that should be everything that I need. And they are, they are definitely traveling. And they are making their way into the storage system. This is awesome. I never thought I'd be excited by a water-based farm, but here we are. Anyway, if I pop through this door, I can then crack on with the replanting. And I have to say, for such a simple little system, I am absolutely chuffed to bits of this thing. It's really simple. It's really functional. It's perfect. So let's move swiftly on to the next stage. Down at the bottom here, I want to... Oh, I'm in creative mode. Why did that freak me out? <laughs> that was an incredibly embarrassing noise to make. Down at the bottom here, I want to create an elevator, which will allow us to travel from the bottom bottom of the mountain actually up into our little base up here. And of course, the first stage of this process, now that I'm a certified builder, is to do some certified building. Even though this is technically the entrance to the house, I still want it to feel like a dark and dingy basement. And I would say I've done a pretty decent job. Am I going to go all in with the details here? I feel like I am. Are we going to get some drips? Yes, we are. We have got drips officially. This is great. This is great. I'm happy with this. Even though it seems like I've made the walls out of infested cracked stone. That's not ideal. I'm sure it's fine. So down here, this is where our entrance is going to be. Past that point, it seems like you'd need to be a mountaineer to get up to the house. And as I am no Killian Journey, I'm going to be taking the elevator. And these elevators are something that I have built possibly a billion of, maybe a trillion. Which means it will be extra embarrassing if I manage to get this wrong. So push up. Yep, yep, yep. And then... Okay, so the other one should just go here. I mean, yeah, that looks, yeah, that looks about right. So if I activate this bottom observer, nothing happens. Excellent news. We were slightly over the push limit, so I've replaced one of these front blocks here with an observer. That takes the number of blocks that this piston is pushing down to 12, which means everything should now be working. So the elevator travels up, and it will stop in the basement, which it has. And then to go back down, I just have to activate this observer right here and everything will go to the floor, but I haven't set up the floor properly. No, <laughs> stop. <laughs> oh, have I broken it? Uh, almost. After that, minor panic. It's time for the redstone. And also, of course, a little bit of decoration as well. I just, I couldn't help myself. Now to make life a lot simpler with this system, I've decided to do it fully automatic. So we hit the button, Everything travels up to the top and then we can hop off of the elevator once it arrives in the basement But then the elevator will automatically start dropping back down as well Now the reason for this is because I assume someone who has a house this cool Probably has an elytra and they are never going to use the elevator to get down and then travel out of their base It's just not gonna happen. I mean look at this you build your house on a mountain for a reason Imagine just jumping out of here and flying off into the distance So with the entrance way completed the basement all completed the farm storage system completed and of course the farms themselves It is now time to move things up to the top floor and this is going to be the main storage system But as I mentioned earlier space is tight space is very very tight in this area here We can't be having a gigantic chest monster or even really any hoppers behind chests. I mean, if I were to have a traditional storage system in here, we would have this much room left and that just isn't going to do. So off in this corner, this is where my bed is going to be going. We've got a little bedside lantern and everything, even some potted plants as well. And this, this is going to be my storage system. 
all of my storage is going to be going in here. And of course, I'm going to do this using shulker boxes. But you see, I want to do something. I'm a pretty forgetful person. I'm often leaving things behind in my storage system, constantly having to go back and forth to it to pick them up. And this extra step in the process where I have to make my way up into the house itself, then wind my way up to the top floor, that's a bit of a pain in the backside. So I want to make it so that my storage system is accessible in two areas. We've got the storage system down here. And then we have the storage system up there. And importantly, the same items are in this storage system that are in the storage system up at the top. And the way that I request the items, say for example, they're up in the top storage system, is by pressing this button right here, they flow down. And then if I'm in the top storage system, I can request the items from this chest here to go up to the top one. Hopefully all of that makes sense. This is not a joke, okay? I had every intention of making the back of this build pretty, but the more redstone I add, the more difficult that's going to be. So I've created one of the water streams, which is going to send our shulker boxes across here, and then they're going to run across into our barrel down at the bottom. And that system all seems to be working quite well. And now both systems seem to be working quite well. So it's time for a guided tour of my mountain house. First things first, despite the fact that I've spent this entire video blowing my own trumpet about how cool this build looks, I think it's important that we quickly acknowledge how cool this build looks. This might just be one of my favorite houses I've ever designed ever. I'm just, I'm super happy with it. But the best thing about this build is that it's incredibly functional as well. <laughs> Did you see that? I go over there trying to steal the limelight from a mountain house. What are you doing? As I was saying, this structure is packed, filled to the brim with all sorts of different functionality. The first of that functionality is my movable storage system. So down at the bottom here, you can see Mumbo storage. It's looking not very impressive in the slightest. But if I press this button, things will start to happen. Now, it's, you know, it takes it takes a little bit of time to get going. You know, it takes a little while for the items to start moving through. But as you can see, we are now getting my storage dropping through into this barrel right here. You know, a house on top of a mountain, that's a bit tricky to get to. Sometimes you want to quickly grab some stuff and have it more accessible. So you can move your storage system from the top all the way down into the bottom. Now, if you want to get up into the house, all you have to do is hit this button right here and you will go up through the elevator and make your way into the basement, which I think we can all agree looks rather lovely. But then if we hop up this ladder here, we're on the first floor of the build. And this one is very important because this is the farming storage system and also the farming activation area. Food is difficult to come by when you're on top of a mountain, but thankfully we've got ourselves a triple farm. And if I hit this button right here, that will harvest and all of the items will make their way into this barrel. So we should see that is all starting to flow in now. The design itself is pretty old school, but it definitely does the trick and covers all of the food that you're going to need. Time to quickly do some replanting. And finally, we move on to the top floor of this build, which is the bedroom and also the storage system. Now, as you can see, storage system is completely empty because all of my items are down at the bottom there. But pressing this button requests all of the items to come up to the top. And as you can see, they're all here. So we have a mobile storage system which allows us to access our important items in two areas, depending on where we are in our base. That is incredibly useful for someone who is as forgetful as I am. So that, my friends, is that. My Minecraft 1.18 mountain house has been completed. It looks fantastic. It works incredibly well. I'm really, really happy with this build. And I hope that you like it as well. Hope you found this video enjoyable. And I'll catch you in the next one. See ya. Oh, okay. Video done, video done. And I managed to show off the entire thing without, yeah, showing the back. That's good. Woo.